Uh, hi, this is Simon with Trade and Perform Coaching with a review for uh, Friday's market. Uh, that was for uh, September 6, 2013. So I'm a little bit late getting this out. We have been uh, iced in over the weekend, but uh, I felt it was valid enough to get it out overnight. and Hopefully people can see it in the morning. So um, a couple of issues. The first thing that I discussed, you know, non-farm payrolls is a really hard day to trade. And so you have to consider the perspective I come from, first of all. I come from a perspective of trying to trade leveraged, concentrated positions, right, in a very specific manner, meaning I want a very high win rate and I want a very consistent win rate. So one of those things that make it difficult is when volatility ex uh, expands to an extreme, right? And so what I mean by that is that first if we look at the gap, the gap was significant, right? We closed the prior day down at uh, 1784. Uh, we gapped and actually opened uh, just uh, just under 1802. So we already have about an 18 point gap. The average day in the ES is somewhere between 10 and 13 points, depending on the day. So there's not a lot of days where we'll just continue rallying, although on this particular day we did, right? The other concern that I have uh, coming into the morning is look at the extreme volatility right when the news is released, right? So if you look at this area right here, right? So this is the 7.30 news release, uh, which is right here. It ended on this bar, okay? And this bar has an extreme in a single one minute bar, right? We travel from 1798, essentially, approximately 1798, let's just call it 1797, all the way down to 1787, a 10-point swing. We swing back, and then in the next one-minute bar, right, we swing all the way back to 1795, right, and then we swing all the way back down over the next three minutes, all the way down to 1786, another 10-point swing. Okay, so that alone in this very small period of time right here, um, enormous damage can occur in that small period of time. The other thing that that tells me is on the news release that traders were not clear on exactly what they were looking for. Usually when there's a unified number that traders are looking for and it comes out opposite of what they were expecting, uh, the market tends to have a very tiny uh, counter trade and then shoot in the direction that the market's going to go. In this particular case, it didn't. And so this was my first call for caution in the day. Uh, the second area that I was cautious on was that we had no idea, right, whether we were going to go for fill or gap fill on the open or half gap. Half gap was actually in initial uh, where the initial resistance is. And the way that that works is initial resistance, once broken, will act as support. Um, the other thing that I concentrated on for the other day was that, A, I did not want to short out of the gate. The reason for that is often when you get a large gap, if the news truly is uh, a fundamental changer within the market on non-farm payroll days, you end up with days that the uh, what's called OTF or other time frame players will come into uh, play. And those guys are essentially the mutual funds, uh, hedge funds, and large institutional players. And they just don't care about intraday support levels. They are making moves based on fundamental changes in the market. And they don't, um, they don't particularly care if a support level holds or doesn't hold. Uh, they're just moving large, large, uh, both futures positions and stock positions. And that tends to run over small traders. So caution at the open was warranted. Um, I'd also uh, chosen, if you follow me to um, on my um, Twitter stream, to play the NASDAQ long. And I got stopped out twice there. One time for a five-point loss. The other time was about two and a half. So it's called a total of... Seven and, a, seven and a half points. And when I take two losses back to back, the area I, I had taken the long, it was approximately right here at 1798.50. The thinking being that the market um, ES was holding the 1798.50, it had tested twice and held. Uh, well, we finally flushed behind and it ended up stopping me out. The, the painful part of that is if we look at the NASDAQ uh, really quickly, we'll also see that, that entry point, and I'll show you exactly where it was. 
I can pull it up real quick here. Uh, is not what I wanted to accomplish. So we'll see if we can't get this to uh, refrain. I have no idea what this is down here, but uh, there it is. Uh, so if we look at this carefully, and I'll see if I can eliminate this right, where I was trying to get long um, and Q, which has been over the last couple of days a stronger sister, I ended up getting uh, stopped out twice back to back as we did go for half gap and a little bit more on NQ. Uh, but the concept itself was right. You can see we got a nice reversal from there. Uh, from what I understand, Apple's relatively weak uh, in the NASDAQ, and we pushed all the way back up to and above new highs. Uh, so I basically got stopped out at 34.87 on my second trade. Um, I believe that is correct. And so I had the right idea, but I also had two stops back to back. The reason why I'm discussing that is something that's of critical importance when you're trading leverage is that, first of all, you don't bury yourself on any one particular day. No one day matters. No one trade matters. No one week matters. I need consistency in my trades. I had a really good day. Uh, actually, the most of the week has been extremely good. Um, and if I um, simply manage to keep my down days very small, uh, A, I might have an opportunity later in the day, but B, I don't have to trade for free a third day. I can certainly make up this loss on Monday and, uh, you know, and even move to profit and net net the week was profitable and I certainly expect next week to be profitable and consistently profitable. Uh, the other thing that I want to look at here real quick is on my afternoon trade and, and I may have just been a little bit out of sorts on Friday and maybe uh, it was because I, I actually ended up having to go to a hotel to find power because uh, power had gone out uh, over a uh, multiple square blocks where I live. So uh, maybe it was just that I was on the move but I had taken another trade without an appropriate uh, rotation. One of the things I stressed in the AM session is having a, uh, actually yet on Friday we wanted a seven or eight point rotation before even considering getting into a trade. And that's where I made a trading error, both in the morning, right? Because our rotation out of the gate was uh, 180, let's call it 1802. So to get a seven or eight point rotation would have required me to come down to 1794, uh, the backside of initial resistance. And I simply did not wait for it, and I would consider that a poor execution on my part. And uh, I will look to um, correct that and uh, moving forward, uh, not repeat that same error, right? But uh, unfortunately, in the afternoon, I made the exact same uh, poor choice. And if you look, 1806 was our high. Uh, we got a, a pullback. I actually ended up buying 1803.50, which was a reasonable area to get in, right? With the theory being, that I had uh, assumed we would come up and close it at new highs. I was really thinking we get that 1807 to 1809. We ended up getting that in uh, Sunday night's Globex session, uh, but that's fine. The, the important thing that I wanted to show you here was that I went half size on my trade size from what I normally position, and I went with a larger stop. I put the stop here four points behind my entries, which meant that I was essentially at 1799.50, which would put me right here right on top of this zone. And while it would have been painful to get stopped out, I figure I already had a pretty good rotation coming in. Um, this would have taken me all the way down to the appropriate rotation that I was looking for, and I should have gotten a, a rebound back up. And sure enough, uh, I did get that rotation uh, back to 1805 by the end of the day. Uh, as it was, I tried to hold on till the 315 close and ended up getting stopped break even as I moved my uh, stop up right at the close. Uh, to make sure I didn't end up having a loss. But the key, com key component there is, after you set a loss as a trader, it's critical to remember, hey, um, I don't want to try to defend that loss, right? A lot of traders spend a lot of time going, oh, well, my loss is, you know, my stop loss, I better close it out here because my stop loss will get hit. And it's a big mistake. One of the things about keeping your mind calm is not moving your stops around, not moving your exits around. The less you think, the less you think, the uh, you know, the more that the uh, the more you can stay calm and you don't get fearful. That's what I was trying to say. I apologize. I got distracted there by text. And so, in that process, right, the more you try to defend that, the more you try to defend that, the more it will be um, you'll be frazzled mentally. If you want to stay consistent, respect your stops right have appropriate entries and the entry was still when I went for this 
trade, right? We're still at the back of this zone, so it's still a good trade location, right? Uh, I was just too early. I didn't have a significant enough rotation, and it gave me an opportunity to get profitable. So at any rate, long story short, um, it was a poor entry. I demonstrated two things that were poor and two things that were good. I didn't move my stops. I respected them. Uh, my entries were horrible Friday, uh, probably moving around when uh, I didn't have my office setting and I wasn't exactly comfortable where I was working out of was probably a bad idea. The third point was I ha did have several traders that took a short right here. My only criticism of, of the short in this area, my only my only criticism of the short in this area is that uh, we had a potential for a trend day up and I really thought that we could push beyond this 1806 into this 1807, 1809. Uh, the market had been heading straight up uh, essentially since 9.30 a.m. and it just wasn't worth the risk for me to get chopped up or have a small rotation right and go through the frustration that would be involved with it. It was a fine trade. Obviously, it ended up paying uh, quite nicely no matter where you entered in that zone. But sometimes you just have to go, you know, big gap, trend day up, Friday afternoon. And uh, it, certainly, it, it certainly looked like, uh, you know, we could go and close on the highs. And sure enough, we hit those on, on Sunday evening. So uh, anyways, I've gone longer than I wanted to go. I didn't trade well. Uh, I'm not always the best trader of my own uh, trade plan, although I tried very hard, but I am very good at executing consistently. And uh, I do keep an eye out for the highest odds trades. So anyways, I hope that helped a couple of people. Uh, we'll see what holds holds tomorrow. But remember, December is usually pretty bullish going into the end of the year. There's a lot of money managers that are underperforming. And if I'm going to pick a side, uh, I'd rather consistently pick a side to the long side from set from uh, uh, pushes down lower. There have been consistently for the last three months buyers below, and uh, I think that's the easiest trade out there. So, anyways, this is Simon with Trade and Perform Coaching. I hope that helped a couple of people, and uh, I do have the uh, morning trade review pre-market uh, at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. I'll put out the link right before. Everyone's welcome. Uh, I've gotten a lot of really good feedback from that, and I would encourage continued feedback in that area so I can fine-tune those uh, pre-market reports and help people make money. Anyways, y'all have a great night. We'll talk to you soon.